If you'll read along with me, you'll find that the persons who are making the accusations, they're really the ones who have a problem. I hear them telling you to shut up, that you're going to be embarrassed, and I even hear them flat out saying, I'm telling you what to do as a pastor. Give me a chance, and I'll give you what does the Bible say. Always ask for, what does the Bible say? Get it right here on Star News. New time, Thursday nights at 9 o'clock. Are you going to church only to find a club? Are you tired of looking for the Bible but only getting babble? If you want to find people who are studying God's Word, come examine the Church of Christ. We're meeting right here at 250 the Boulevard in downtown Eden. If you want to hear more plain Bible teaching, watch A Word from the Lord Thursday nights at 9 o'clock right here on WGSR. The views expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its employees, or ownership. All right, welcome everyone to uh, A Word from the Lord. Put our fire disclaimer here. This program does contain Bible teaching, and if you don't love the truth, you need to have some discretion about you. We're, it's good to be back and good to see everyone uh, this evening. I... Uh, I, uh, <clears throat> I, I've been on, a bit out of town, and so we're glad that uh, the, the guys that have been filling in on this program uh, have been doing a good job, I, I know. And from the, the call that was, uh, the last call that was, uh, that called in, I know there's been some good dialogue and discussion that's been going on. So uh, we hope that you will continue to watch us. Uh, if you are in the Eden area, here's where you can meet with us at, uh, at 250 The Boulevard. We hope that you will come out and visit with us. Have some visitors from the, <clears throat> from the community come out this evening and uh, found us, and we're glad to, glad to have them visiting with us. If you would like to reach me, 276-340-2653 or 336-394-5721 is how you can reach me or word from the Lord at gmail.com. And, of course, as, as uh, Micah uh, stated, if you're in the in the Martinsville area, you can meet 823 Starting Avenue. If you're in the Danville area, 120 American Legion uh, there in Danville. <clears throat> They'll be glad for you to come by and visit. You know, I've been telling individuals the difference between the Church of Christ and the denominations are we have Bible study, and they don't. And I know we related the, the account of where all the preachers who don't want to study the Bible, if you come and show, if you show up at their doorstep, They'll tell you, well, we're not going to study the Bible tonight, or we may not study the Bible tonight, but in the Church of Christ, we're studying the Bible. We're opening the book. We're getting into, the, into God's Word because we know that it is the engrafted Word that can save your soul, James 1.21. So we are certainly all about studying the Bible, and we hope that you will come out and examine the Church of Christ that's in your area if you are looking for the truth. And so uh, uh, we certainly have an open invitation for that. Uh, if you uh, uh, hear us say you're welcome, we actually mean that. And uh, I know what the, the guys were saying earlier about the signs that say, don't welcome. You know what? If you don't want us to come by, don't invite us. Don't send out your flyers. Don't put them up, up on the bulletin board, community bulletin boards. Don't, uh, don't have robocalls calling in and, and uh, randomly calling people in the community because you might call a member of the Church of Christ and we might take you up on offer. You know, don't pass out tracts. Don't, don't have your members. We're trying to do you pastors a favor. You need to tell your members just flat out, don't be inviting people to come to our assemblies because you might invite a member of the Church of Christ. See, you just need to go ahead and tell them that. And, uh, you know, save yourself some grief and agony. And because, you know, if we're not going to be invited, then, you know, the likelihood of us coming is very, very slim. But if you're going to put out invitations, you know, in the newspaper and radio and what have you, uh, well, that's an invitation. So, anyway, but if you're in the, in the Eden area or the Martinsville area or the Danville area, this is where you can meet with the Church of Christ. You are welcome, and you will be welcome. So we hope that you will, will take advantage of that. Tonight, what I want to do is I want to just do a little lesson, thought-provoking lesson, to see if you are a good child or not. You know, sometimes people act childish when it comes to doing certain things, and some people grow out of it, but sometimes people are childish on up into their adulthood. But if you have ever been told to leave something alone, probably if you're older, if you didn't leave it alone, you got it from your parents. Your mother, your father, they got on to you. If you were told not to touch something and you went ahead and, and, and bothered it, touched it, you, you probably got in trouble. You need to leave things alone. That's a constant. I have, I have uh, children 
And sometimes I have to tell them, you know, you go into a store, you need to keep your hands to yourself. Don't be touching everything. And uh, sometimes if my child continues to touch things that they don't need to be touching, I'll say, just put your hands in your pockets. And they walk around the store like this with their hands in their pockets because they can't leave things alone. If you can't leave things alone, you're going to be punished. Well, if your mom or your dad told you that, maybe, maybe you did it. Maybe you obeyed your parents. I don't know. But you might have been rebellious. You know, some, some children, when they're scolded, they, they bow up and they pout and they fuss, and they're going to be rebellious. The one sure way to get a child or a rebellious child to do something is tell them not to do it, and they're going to do it. And they're going to find every way they can to do it or to do it and not get caught. They're going to rebel. Well, there are some things that you need to leave alone. You need to leave these things alone. Now, you may have disobeyed your parents. You may have obeyed your parents. But the question we're concerned about is, will you obey Jesus? Jesus said that there are some things that you need to leave alone. You need to leave these things alone. Don't mess with them. Don't bother them. Just get them out of your sight. You know, put them out of your midst. Uh, uh, just have nothing to do with them. The question tonight is, will you leave it alone? Or will you rebel? Will you do what Jesus said and leave it alone? Or are you going to be like this child and bow up, uh, clench your fist, you know, put a, a, a grimace on your face, and just be all determined that you're going to do the very thing that Jesus said not to do? Are you going to be disobey God? Well, leave it alone. Here's what Jesus wants you to know. In Matthew chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, Jesus had something to say about individuals who did not teach the truth. And I want you to notice what he said. In Matthew chapter uh, 15, let's get over to it. Matthew, type in one hand, Matthew 15. Here we go. Matthew 15, verse 1, Then came Jesus... Uh, then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, uh, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, It is a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, and honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. Ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, This people draweth nigh to me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for the doctrines and commandments of men. And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand. Listen, he's speaking to tell them something about these guys that give you traditions of men and make the commandments of God none effect. This is what he says. He says, That which goeth into the mouth defileth a man. But that which, uh, uh, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth a man. That which goeth into the mouth defileth a uh, uh, Not that which goeth into the man defileth a man. But that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth him. Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this, saying? But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Now watch it. Leave them alone. Leave them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. If the blind lead the blind, both shall fall in the ditch. Now, Jesus wasn't saying... Don't talk about their doctrine. Leave them alone. He wasn't saying like the caller, the last caller on the on, on the, uh, 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 said to Micah. He wasn't saying just leave everybody alone. He's saying to them, don't be worried about them being offended. You don't need to be concerned about them since they are blind leading the blind. You don't need to be all overly concerned about them. But I'm telling you, friends. You need to leave them alone in the sense of stop following them. Stop being concerned about where they're, uh, what they're saying and be concerned about where they're leading you because if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall in the ditch. Leave them alone. Listen, friends, when it comes down to uh, doing what God said, 
you need to realize that you need to leave some of these guys alone. You're going to be messing with some people who are going to be leading you to a devil's hell if you don't stop and consider what they're saying to you and get away from them. You need to leave them alone. Listen, let them alone. The blind leaders will take blind followers into a ditch, and so it is when you are listening to a guy that's not telling you the truth and you blindly follow them. Sometimes we say they're sheep. We say that they're blindly following someone, not knowing where they're going, not, not, not careful about uh, uh, what they're teaching. They're just blindly following hook, line, and sinker. They're lemmings. They'll just follow someone right over a cliff, if that's really what it meant. Listen, what concerns us in the church of Christ, this is what concerns us, is that there are so many people that are blindly following these blind guides and not examining where it is they're leading them. You see, why is it that your pastor, preacher, rabbi, bishop, or whoever it is, won't give you a Bible answer for what they teach? If you go to ask them why is it that you teach this, and you press them about what they're teaching, they're going to be soon disgruntled with you. They're going to put you in your place. And they're going to tell you like Jackie Poe and some of these others, you know, I'm not going to answer your question. Don't ask me any questions. I'm not going to give an answer. They're going to tell you, you need to quit asking questions. You just need to hush up and take it. Friends, I'm telling you, when people are blindly following blind leaders, you're going to be in a big old mess. Here's an example. I'm going to give you an example of some individuals who are blindly following blind leaders. Now, I want to first talk to you about the leaders. The leaders of the nation of Islam. The nation of Islam, they are corrupt and they are crazy. Now, that's according to some well -known, a well-known former member. Listen to what Malcolm X, Malcolm X says about the, uh, the nation of Islam, about the, the leader or the, uh, uh, let's see, yes, the founder and the leader at the time of the nation of Islam. what he says here we go and this is why Malcolm X left the nation of Islam I'm trying to figure out how to I've got this uh, too big and I can't read it. Can't see it. Get over to it. Apologize for this. Bear with me. They're going, he's going to start talking in a minute. This is why he left the nation of Islam. No. Uh, maybe we don't have any audio. All right, it's mine. Hang on a second. It's going to get loud. I don't know that I was insane, but on a program in Chicago called... Frankly, uh, it has been a uh, well-known fact, though uh, only in the form of rumor, that uh, there has been a up. deal of... Uh, apprehension at my being out of the black Muslim movement on the part of the black Muslims themselves. 
and I had uh, stated in a newspaper article about an effort to take my life back in January, and at that time the Muslims denied it. In fact, they tried to make it appear to my brother that I was insane. But on a program in Chicago called Hotline, was moderated by Wesley South, John Ali, the national secretary, admitted, uh, I think it was Wednesday or Thursday, one of these days last week, that they absolutely were going to kill me. Why are they threatening your life? Well, uh, primarily because they're afraid that I will tell the real reason that they've been, that I'm out of the black Muslim movement, which I never told. I kept to myself. But the real, real reason is that Elijah Muhammad, the head of the movement, is the father of eight children by six different teenage girls, different, uh, six different teenage girls who were his private personal secretary. Uh, four of them had one child apiece by him. Uh, two of them had two children, and one of those two is pregnant right now in Los Angeles uh, with his uh, third child. And uh, the, the one who first made me aware of this was Wallace Muhammad, Mr. Muhammad's son. And it was uh, their fear that uh, if I remained in the black Muslim movement, and this came into the knowledge of his followers, that they would leave him and follow me. So uh, a, a plan immediately was set in motion to uh, take me down, put me out, and uh, the statement that I allegedly made, or not that I allegedly made, I did make it, the statement that I made about Kennedy was used as a, a pretext to take me down. But in reality, it was, the, it was because I had come to New York and told Joseph, the captain in New York, and uh, the secretary and the minister in Boston about these children that Mr. Muhammad had. And it was that, that right there was the real reason for my being out of the movie. Did you what get out of will you take to protect yourself from this threat? I take no steps. I have a rifle. If anybody comes to my house without a good reason, I, I intend to try and use it. Uh, and that's all. All right. Now that's why he was out of the of the Nation of Islam because of the corruption. Uh, Wallace uh, Muhammad, Wallace Fard Muhammad, was uh, was had illegitimate children by eight eight different girls or eight eight children by six different girls, and that's why he left. Now listen to what he says here about about uh, this man. Let's see. They ordered my death. This is what he said. He calls him, he actually calls him crazy. The only thing that I regret in all of this is that two black groups have to fight and kill each other off. <laughs> Elijah Muhammad could stop the whole thing tomorrow just by raising his hand. Really, he could. He could stop the whole thing by raising his hand. But he won't. He doesn't love black people. He doesn't even love his own followers. Proof of which they're killing each other. They killed one in the brown. They shot another one in the brown. They tried to get six of us uh, uh, Sunday morning. And uh, the pattern has developed across the country. The man has gone insane, absolutely out of his mind. Besides, you can't be 70 years old and surround yourself by a handful of 16, 17, 18-year-old girls and keep your right mind. You can't do it. All right, so there you go. So now, why am I saying this? Why am I bringing up the uh, uh, the Nation of Islam? I'll tell you why. Because uh, a few weeks ago, a few weeks ago, one of the representatives, I guess, the uh, self-appointed representatives. Can we turn this uh, monitor down now? Um, someone, please. Uh, that, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, one of the self-appointed representatives, Mal Malvester Muhammad called in and a lot of individuals were talking about how intelligent he was. Now listen, I want you to recognize, friends, that the individuals, the leaders of the Nation of Islam, that's, that's the man who founded it. He, he had all these, these uh, uh, teenage girls and he had children by these teenage girls. That's, that's where it started. Now this man, Malvester Muhammad, is following in his footsteps. He actually is going to Say some interesting things about Master Muhammad. The uh, said he's, he's God, but listen what he says. The callers are impressed with his intellect. Now, what that tells me is, if you're impressed by the intellect of someone who is following, who is following a man that started a movement, 
and surrounded himself with teenage girls and had children by them, then you are blindly following a blind leader. Now listen to what he says. The first two callers, the first two callers are, are going to talk about Malvester, how smart he is, and then we've just put a collection of some things that, that Malvester said, some of the more brilliant things that he said, put them together, and just let you be the judge of how brilliant and intellectual he really is, and you judge for yourself and see whether individuals who are following Malvester or those who believe the same thing, if they're really uh, smart, are they following with their eyes open, or are they blindly following these blind leaders? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I actually think he's a very intelligent man, and I think you guys should actually give him a chance to actually voice his opinion. Because, well, I mean, I feel as though he has a lot that he could actually tell you guys that could actually help. Because that was different that um, Sam Vesta and uh, Matt Vesta is talking some real intelligent things. And if God would uh, uh, allow Caucasian people, people to be on the planet, then uh, and maybe he intends for them to stay like that. Matt, Matt Vesta is talking some real intelligent things uh not like not like uh the black people in america we were we was in slavery for 400 years here in america really not not that is talking some real intelligent things in the in the genesis the 15th chapter of genesis uh god told abraham no was sure that sea would be a strange on a land that's not theirs and they shall afflict them for 400 years and we are those people that's no, a you're not. in this country no, you're not 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 that is talking some Real intelligent things. That's a good question. Is yeah. God a man or a spirit? He's a man. That's a good question. Is yeah. God a man or a spirit? He's a man. Not, not that that is talking some real intelligent things. Hey, God in the person of Master Farad Muhammad. So tell us who is God? Since he's a man, is he is he this man? Allah come in the person of Master Farad Muhammad. Now make it clear. He came in the person of Master Farad. I, I'm reading it today. God in the person of this That's man. Right. Came in now, the person of now, wait a minute. Now, that is talking some real intelligent things. This is the guy ago that you told us they had to go to. Can I, ask, can I ask you a question, Mount Vesta? Is this the guy that you, you said they had to go to the University of California? Program. Hello? Is this the guy that had to go to all the universities? Yes, sir. Okay, now God has to go to university? All that stuff you was, you was telling us that Master Brown? Right yeah, he had to go to university. He went. He did. Study. Really? Jesus didn't go to any university. How come your man had to? Well, you know what? Uh, he got a greater job than Jesus. Really? I'm loving it. I'm greater loving it. Greater job than This Jesus. gentleman, Master Farad, who is God, in the person of Master Farad, had to go to school because he had a greater job. Would you tell me? Real intelligent things. I don't know. You tell well, me. You know the symbol of Jesus? You know what they were? Say it again. The symbol of Jesus was a fish. No, that's no that that's not that's not in the Bible. Yes, it is. That's not uh, the, the symbol of Jesus was now, a fish. Now, where's that in the Bible? Or is that in the truth of the Bible? Or did you read it somewhere else? It's in the Bible. No, it's not. Uh, he said he should be fisherman of men. And that's the symbol of that. That's the symbol. But that's part of it. But not not that is talking some real intelligent things. But uh, uh, uh I I know more about uh. uh stuff you don't know, uh, oh, yeah, but, but yeah. you know, some of the stuff won't put in the Bible. There right. was a couple of books that Moses didn't put in. You right. know that. Matt Matt Vesta is talking some real intelligent things. Question because I believe that Jesus, I believe in Jesus, I follow Jesus, I believe that Jesus came and, and they so-called crucified him. Matt Matt Vesta is talking some real intelligent things. No, he didn't die on the cross. And he, did he die in a tray? Uh, you know what? Uh, the Bible contradict, con contradicting itself, but, but, but from we, we uh, have thought about uh, Jesus. Jesus uh, escaped death, and he lived uh, a long life after that. Uh, Matt, Matt Vesta is talking some real intelligent things. Uh, Jesus was a greater man than Moses. They didn't kill Moses. So why would God let them kill a man greater than Moses? Real intelligent things. You know, you know Moses 
Moses was a half original man, just like uh, uh, Barack Obama. No. Now, now, Dustin is talking some real intelligent things. Now, where's that? Now, where's that in the Bible? Or is that in some other book that you added to it? Uh, uh, and, Moses and, uh, was a half Ethiopia. original man. So, you know, you know, when you uh, talk about the Bible over in the East, you know, you you have to know that the people over there were black people. Malvester, everybody is not black or white. You know, we're talking about individuals. Now, now, now I'm talking. Now, now Vester is talking some real intelligent things. Intelligent was saying that we know that we know that, but see, you trying to see, we done got you above your understanding, so now you have to attack. It's more than black. Now, and white. Everybody knows it's black. It's been five atoms. It has now, been five Lester, atoms. You know what? Now, now, Vester is talking some real intelligent things. Now, Vester, that you know, we're not going on this road. But you're going to you. spouse and all this, all this black, Islamic brown, doctrine. red, yellow, and Caucasian. Each one of them is an atom. And each one of them had a mate. Now, now, now Dustin is talking some real intelligent things. One chance? You want to hear where you get the five atoms? Now, you have to uh, understand. Where do you get the five atoms? Well, let me talk then, you know. Don't get excited. I'm, I'm just trying to get you to the point. Well, I'm, you want to run around the bush? The point. Uh, each race had an atom. It was the beginning of each people. Okay, where did you get that? Where I get it from? Yeah, where do you get it from? Uh, uh, it's common sense. Oh, no, it's common belief to you. Give it from the Bible. That's what we want. Now, now Dustin is talking some real intelligent things. Now, now, this is, this is, this is a word from the Lord. What does the Bible say? This is not a word from Malvester in some fictitious work that he brought up. Tell us where you get five atoms from. Everybody came from Adam and Eve. Okay. Everybody came from them. But through genetic engineering... We made the other races. Now, now, now Dustin is talking some real intelligent things. All right, Malvester was talking some real intelligent things. Now, I didn't hear many intelligent things from Malvester. Malvester didn't hear any of them, any real intelligent. But it just goes to show that some people are blindly following guys like this who will say anything. And we could go on and on about some things that that Master... Uh, Fard Muhammad, Wallace Fard Muhammad said about the things that, you know, he was revealing these great truths. The, the moon tipped over and, and poured out the water on the earth. Oh, that's real intelligent. You know, that, that's great. The white man's the devil. That's, that's, really, that's really brilliant. And so these are the intellectual things that people are following and saying, well, look how, look how great they are. Listen, here's what you need to consider, friends. You need to you need to leave these guys alone. You need to leave guys like Malvester alone and quit following them because the Bible says, now I know that those of you in the nation of Islam don't, don't follow the Bible. You say you do, the truth of the Bible. But the Bible says if you deny Christ as the Son of God, you need to leave people alone. In Acts 9 and verse 20, Acts 9 and verse 20, listen to this. The Bible says, that straightway, this is Saul, Paul, straightway preached Christ in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. Christ is the Son of God. As a matter of fact, when Peter, when Peter professed who he was in Matthew chapter 16, and verse 16, look at this. Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus didn't deny it. Jesus didn't say, no, Peter, you missed it. Look what he said. Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, art thou, Simon bar Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. He said, Blessed are you, not cursed are you, for calling me the Son of God. Now, the Quran says that Jesus is not the Son of God. But the Bible says if you believe, or if you don't believe that Jesus is the Son of God, then you're a curse. Look, 1 John 1 John chapter 2 and verse 22. Listen to what the Bible says. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Jesus is the Son of God. He's the Son of God. And if you are listening to guys like this, you know, you need to leave them alone. 
And now, are you blindly following these, people, these guys? Are you really dazzled by their intellect? I say they're not very smart. Look, in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 3, listen to what Paul says. 1 Timothy 6 and verse 3. You know, some individuals follow people just because, oh, they got, they're smart. They got a Ph.D., a D.H.D., they got all kinds of doctorates on the wall. But most of them are probably like uh, old Michael Penn over here who's got a, a, a false degree. And they're just padding their name and padding their, uh, uh, you know, their, their, their pedigree so they'll look like somebody. Look what Paul said. He said, if any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome truth, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, notice what he says about him. He is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strives of words. Whereof cometh envy, strife, frettings, evil surmising, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds. Now, if that's not what individuals uh, are following, who look to these guys who have these great pedigrees and say, oh, how brilliant they are, I don't know what it is. They're blind. They're blindly following blind leaders. Friends, they're not going to get you to heaven. They're not going to get you to heaven. They're going to get you to a devil's hell. Now, some of you out there are going, oh, yeah, that's right. You're right on target, James. You're right on the spot when it comes to the nation of Islam. When it comes to the Muslims, you're right on target. They're blindly following these guys who try to convince them that they're a superior race. And I know that's the case. You know, Malvester wouldn't, wouldn't go there. He, he kept saying that, that black is, the dom, is dominant. But I know what uh, uh, Louis Farrakhan says. Louis Farrakhan says that white men haven't evolved yet. Now, if that's not superior, let me tell you, I'm, mankind is superior to the apes. Now, those of you who believe evolution will say, well, there's a reason why we're superior. Because we have a higher intellect. We're higher evolved. That's what you would say. Well, Louis Farrakhan says that man hasn't evolved yet. You know, we're, we're, not, we're not quite a man, not quite a human beings. Now, you think you're superior. You think you have a greater intellect, but I know this. If you're not doing what the Bible says, you're not wise at all. The Bible says you're foolish. The Bible says you know nothing. Because you're blindly leading people who are blindly following you. Friends, the best thing you can do is leave them alone. Let them alone. Don't mess with them. Don't mess with them. And all of you individuals who are out there saying, yeah, that's right. Y'all need, need to stay away from the Muslims. You know what? You're in the same boat too. There's a lot of so-called Christians who are following blind leaders and you're blindly following them. Listen to what this lady said. She, she hit the nail on the head. These individuals, y'all grow up and you start listening to your pastor and that's all you believe is what your pastor said. Does his current wife, is she acceptable of this? Is this uh, a situation? I think I heard somebody, he didn't really elaborate on that, surprisingly, huh? But I did hear somebody ask that, and he said she believes in what he preaches. And if you remember, she was only 15 when he took her as his wife, and I don't know how long yeah. that she had been going to his church with her parents. But I'm sure if, it's just like anything else, Deborah. if you start out at a very young age. Impressionable. And somebody keeps telling you this is right, telling you this is right, especially in the form of your pastor in the mm -hmm. church, then you think it's right, it's okay. That's right. Now, now, friends, how many of you out there think that the church you're in is right because your pastor has told you that? Or think it's right because that's the way you were, you were raised up? You think it's right because you've never been told it's wrong? You think it's right because you've never examined for yourself? whether it's right or wrong, you're just blindly following it. Blindly following what has been done for generation and generation and generation, and you've never stopped to question, is it really the truth? Jesus said you'll know the truth, and the truth will make you free. John 8, uh, John 8, 32. Why don't you examine the truth and see if what you're being taught is actually in his truth? Are you blindly following these guys? Listen, if you're blindly following... That means you're being led by the devil. I can prove that. In 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4, this is what Paul says. He said, 
Uh, I'm sorry. I'm in the wrong. I'm in the wrong book. Second Corinthians four. So you can't blindly follow me. You have to. You have to check me out. Second Corinthians four. He says, "But we have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking with craftiness, or handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every uh, uh, to." To every, to every man. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the eyes, uh, blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. If you are blindly following your pastor, preacher, rabbi, bishop, whoever it may be, the devil's the one who's leading you, and he's going to lead you into a big old ditch. Because you haven't stopped to examine if what you're being told is actually the truth or not. The blind leading the blind. You need to leave those guys alone. You need to leave them alone. Listen, when someone comes up and says, well, I don't know, but my pastor knows, that tells me you're blindly following these guys. Listen to what this lady says. This lady is asked for the sinner's prayer, and listen to what she says. All right, here on What's the Bible Say. I go along with Brian Edwards. Because Brian is a true Christian man. He preaches the Bible. His church is a spirit-filled church. His church. And I go right. along with, with the way that he preaches and gets his message across. Well, ma'am, let me ask you this Blessed question. Blessed are the peacemakers. Ma'am, let me ask you this question. In, in his statement in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, the Apostle Paul said, Am I crucified for you? Does Brian, was Brian crucified? Does he really have a church? Well, he preaches the Word of God. Okay, we're going to correct that statement now. You see, that's what we do on what Bible say. We're constantly helping you. The Bible says he doesn't have a church. He didn't die for anything. But no. actually, Blessed Hope he is his church. Anything, Excuse me? But he is a, a spirit-filled preacher. How do you tell that? Because I sit in his service every Sunday. Sounds like you're wedded to him. No, I'm not. Well, is the sinner's prayer that he preaches in the Bible? Yes, it is. Where is it? I'll give you a thousand dollars tonight if you can if you can reference it. Well, he preaches the Bible. Well, how about he gives it to you? He's your preacher. He I can, preaches. I I can give that to you. Uh, Go ahead and give. The publican it. prayed, "Be merciful to me, a sinner," and he went away justified. He doesn't. Now, my, now, ma'am, Luke 18 is the publican, and he is already a child of God. He is in the temple. He and the and the other individual are both at the temple. He is not a lost person like you or I would be a Gentile. Now, how does that end, to be, end up being the sinner's prayer? And if that were really the sinner's prayer, don't you think some of these other people would have come on with that for uh, that uh, that reference? I know what I see and hear. Um, let, let me make a statement about that. everyday life with my minister. I see it in him. Let, let, me, let me make a statement. Can we move on? I see the yeah, obviously, let's move on. Let's move on from that because we sure don't want to stay there. Listen, blindly following this guy. Yeah, he is my pastor. He's a godly man, a spiritual man. Listen, friends, if that's such a godly man who's telling you the gospel truth, why does he behave so carnally? Hanging on to someone's car to keep him from leaving. Threw himself on, on, on Mark's car. Hanging all over just to see, if, just to keep him from leaving. Yeah, you know, that's a real godly man. See? Here's what we're telling you, friends. This man and those many, many others like him are blindly leading you who are blindly following them. You need to leave these guys alone. You need to come out from among them. You need to start questioning them. Ask them to give you a Bible answer for why they believe what they believe. And when they can't do it, then you need to leave. You need to change where you are, get them to start preaching the truth, and if they don't do it and when they don't do it, then you can leave. But what we're trying to get you to see, friends, is you need to open your eyes and quit blindly following these guys. Listen to what the wise man says. In Proverbs 19, 28, and if we can, go ahead and put the phone lines up. Proverbs 19, verse 28. Here it says, Uh... I'm sorry, 1927 is what it should be. Cease, my son, to hear the instruction that causeth to err from the words of knowledge. 
You need to stop listening to these guys. You need to cease from it. You need to leave them alone. You need to avoid them not to play. I'll tell you what, if someone, if you talk, if these guys come up and say, well, you know what, I got the, I got the swine flu. Oh, I'm going to stay away from you. I'm, I'm going to stay away from you. You got the bird flu. I got the bubonic plague. I'm going to stay away from you. But if they come up and tell you, well, we've got, we've got, we're teaching false doctrine. Well, that's all right. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not ashamed of you. I'm not afraid of you. You need to leave them alone. You need to leave them alone. You want to work from the Lord? Yes. Um, can I speak to the pastor? Deacon? I'm James. I'm not a pastor nor a deacon. Just James. Here I am. You're on, you're on the air. Hi. Um, I'm just calling in. I'm just uh, turning into your show. I kind of happened to come in when there was talk about Malcolm X. Mm. Malvester? Oh, yeah, Mal Malcolm X. Yes, go ahead. Yes, there were some, you, you had, yeah, I think, Video clip. I think the topic of discussion was basically Malvester Muhammad and how people were commenting on his intelligence. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm continuing to watch, but I'm really trying to figure out what this show is about. Um, I don't know the word of the Bible verbatim. I can't quote a whole lot of verses to you, you know, can't do that. Um, and I'm not trying to at this moment, but I really would like for you to explain to me what you're doing. Okay. Uh, because, I mean, you know, I, I personally have had many questions about the Bible, different things in the Bible that it, that's what's going on. I mean, I, how, how do we know that this Bible hasn't been rewritten seven times? and a person put its own words in there. I mean, you know, um, the original doctrine, are we getting that? I mean, okay. but really, first and foremost, can you tell me what your show is about? Because I, I'm watching you, I'm listening, and I hear a lot of, and, and I may be wrong, but what I hear is judgment. And well, um, I, I don't want to be judged okay. by you. You know, and I don't think, I don't think you're, you're going to, you know, you're going to be my judge when it's my day to, to you're go right. and I need to either answer God, you know, about what you're what right. it is that I've done in my okay. life. But I would well, like to know, like, what is it that you're, what is it that you guys are trying to profess okay. on this program? All right, really let, let me answer your question. I don't want to feel, okay. I don't want to feel like what you're saying. I got, I got your question. Let, let me answer. Let me try to answer because we're, we're out of time. Here's what we're trying to do. First of all, let me address the judging part. We're not trying to judge unrighteously, but the Bible does say to judge. John 7, 24, judge not according to appearance, but judge righteous judgment. So if we can look at God's word, the word of righteousness, if we can look at the word of righteousness and determine if someone is following this word, then we can make a righteous judgment about that person, whether what they're teaching or what they're practicing and so forth. Would you, would you agree with that? Well, um, I'm confused because I, I too have read in the Bible, judge not least unless you be judged. Okay, you know? well what about um, this verse in the Bible? Uh, well, I, judge not according to appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Sorry, I didn't hear I you. I said judge not according to appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Okay. Hey, how about we put them together? In Matthew 7, where Jesus said, judge not that you be not judged. Yes. He's, he's saying that you don't need to judge unrighteously. In Matthew 7, look, let's, let's put it up here for us. Judge not that you be not judged, for with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged, and with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. In other words, don't judge unrighteously by holding someone else to a standard that you yourself don't want to be held to. Right, of course. So I don't mind... Actually, we ask people, you, you can hold us up to the Bible. You check us out, see if what we're teaching is, is in the Bible. See, so, so we don't mind being judged by the Bible because that's what we're judging other people by. It's the truth. I'm sorry? I know that this Bible, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm seriously not questioning you. I'm questioning, I'm questioning the Bible. Not okay. like I don't believe in it. Not like how, how can you trust the Bible? How, how can you? Okay. I mean, right. I mean, I, I got mean, your question. Let me answer. Let me answer. Hey, All right. Wait, the, this, Jesus walked this Okay, ma'am, I've got your question. 
Let, let me answer it. Let me answer it, please. All right. How can you trust the Bible? Well, just stop and consider this. For example, the Old Testament. The King James Bible, which is what I use, the King James Bible was translated from the original language by using the Masoretic text. Now, the Masoretic text was a text that a group of scribes, the Masoretic scribes, they copied by hand, word for word, line for line. And they did this for thousands and thousands of years. Now, the reason why it's so reliable is because in the uh, mid-1900s, have you heard of the Dead Sea Scrolls? Yes. Okay, the Dead Sea Scrolls were discovered. And in the Dead Sea Scrolls was a portion of every book of the Old Testament with the exception of Esther, I believe. So there was some of every book of the Old Testament. Now, the Dead Sea Scrolls were written a thousand years before the manuscripts that were used to translate the Old Testament of this book into English. Now, what does that mean? That means that for thousands of years, when those guys were copying the text by hand, they didn't miss a lick. In other words, it's accurate. You believe that? I believe that. I believe that. Because, because when you go back and you look at the text that was, that was used, it matches up with what they found in the Dead Sea Scrolls, which was written a thousand years before that. Now, God said, my word shall not pass from this earth. So, right. so if, I believe, if I believe God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to believe his word. Now, that's a, that's a whole show, oh, really, on how you can trust your Bible, but, you know, and that's kind of a lengthy answer, but... And I, and I, and I really wish, I mean, you know, it's very interesting. I've seen this program several times before and come in and listened, and it, but I really wish that maybe a word from the Lord would be what? about that. But, but, but here's the thing, though. Of, here's the thing. Wait, and wait, I, and wait, I, wait, I know what you're doing. I know, I know, what, I know ma'am. But I know, you, you asked a question, let me, let me comment. Here's why we're saying it's a word from the Lord. You may not think it's a word from the Lord, but if the Bible warns about false teachers, and the Bible warns about being led astray, and the Bible warns about being deceived, look at this. The Bible talks about individuals who were bewitching the people, making themselves to be something great. And in 1 Timothy 1, 6-7, look for example what Paul says. 1 Timothy 1 and verse 6, look what he says. He says, From some which having swerved turned aside unto vain jangling, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor where they affirm. Paul is warning about false teachers. He's warning about people who will lead, uh, lead others astray. So is that not a word from the Lord, a word of warning? Isn't that a, a does it have a rightful place in teaching? Yes, that's what I would like to hear. I, I, that's what I'm giving you, though. I'm giving you a word from the Lord. In this case, it's a word of warning about following individuals who aren't teaching the truth. See, the Bible is not just love and grace and mercy and feel good and all that stuff. It's, I mean, that, that's certainly a part of it. Yeah. But there's, there's also a part of, of warning. I mean, Paul said, preach the word, be instant in season and out of season, reprove rebuke, and then exhort with all long-serving doctrine. He, he put two reproves and rebukes in there. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall heap themselves teachers having itching ears. 2 Timothy 4, verses 2-4. So there's constant warnings about people who are coming in, false teachers, and who will lead people astray. So part of our job, part of our program format, is to warn people about false teachers. Does that, does that make sense? That does make sense. Okay. Thank you, Mr. James. I hope you have a great... All right. Thanks for your call. Thanks for your call. All right. Good call. Like that. You're on the word from the Lord. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I think uh, you kind of answered the question um, that I had for you with the young lady who you spoke with. Um, because 
tuning into your, your show and trying to follow it, I too do not understand your true message behind, you know, why you do go about the way of spreading your word that you do. Um, however, I do know uh, Brother Melvester um, personally, and yeah, there are some people who, you know, you don't always agree with, but in reading the word for myself, and I do believe my word, and I do um, have a pastor that I feel is ordained by God to teach me the word, as well as I am to read the word and understand it for myself, so therefore when he relates the word, it is confirmation. But with Brother Melvester, I, I really feel for him at this point for what you just did by placing him on the TV and trying to say to these people um, that he, uh, pretty much you're making him look like he's not smart. Now, he's a very intelligent individual. Well, well, sir, you can be intelligent in the sense of regurgitating facts, but the facts that he's regurgitating, Listen, let those, me those parts aren't, aren't true. Because he, he may not know everything. None of us do. But he has aligned himself with individuals who do know the word. And I'm seeing in him that he is understanding the word a lot sir, more. See, people, you're not allowing I'm people to him, see that. So that I'm whatever him, sir, shape or whatever sir, road right. the Lord or whoever sir. may guide him, sir. what you're going to do is okay. hinder him from Hang being on. able Whoop. to do the, the works in which he is called. Hey. Time out. Take a breath. Let's have a dialogue here. We're running up against the clock, so let's have a little dialogue. I know Malvester seems intelligent, but the things that he's saying, sir, if you can't see, if you can't see those things are not smart, I mean, those things are childhood fables. Here's a man who says dinosaurs didn't exist. Men planted them. You know, the bones, that's, that's who he's following. Following a man who says dinosaurs weren't, aren't real. A man who says water was poured from the moon, and that's how we got water on the earth. That's what I'm talking about. That's not intelligence. I mean, that's not even that's not even childhood fantasy. And so if you want to say that's intelligence, then I, I start questioning your intelligence. See, I'm trying to get you to see that people who follow guys like this and never question, never question, wait a minute, that's not common sense. That's not, that doesn't make sense. That's what I'm warning about. That, that gives me pause when people feel that way about it. So he may seem smart in, in regurgitating some facts, but that doesn't make him intelligent. What? You're supposed to pray for him. If he doesn't understand what you well, know, then your job is to pray. God may reveal the truth unto him so that he can speak well, the truth, well, but you're not chastise him in front of well, you. Because I, no, if no, your no, prayer minute, breaks no. through wait and God whoa, gives him whoa, the knowledge, whoa, then he can out. go and do what you Okay, time out. Take a breath again. Listen, how do you know I don't pray for him? And the fact that he sets himself up as a teacher, James says in James chapter 4, look at this. Uh, excuse me, James chapter, uh, ah, sorry about that. James chapter 3, verse 1. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that ye shall receive the greater condemnation. Here's a man who puts himself up on a pedestal as a teacher, and I'm supposed to give him a pass because he's elevating himself to a position of instructing people? No, I'm not going to be easy on him. That is not your job to be easy on him. This is not your job. This is God's I, job. It's our job to pray. How do you know it's not my job? That's Paul said, charge some that they teach no other doctrine. So that is we that, is may that my be job able to reach his people. Sir? Even, even Jesus himself said that he did not come to the world to condemn it, that he may save it, that he, if whoever does you know not why? believe in him, you know he shall he not said that? judge him. The, well, the reason why Jesus said, I didn't come to the world to condemn the world, because the world was already condemned. What did he say the world to you was about already condemned. Those and words. friend, I, I'm not going over the... Do I, judge I, him. You pray for him. do I need to go over the judging verses again? Judge righteous judgment. Malvester Muhammad says he does not believe Jesus died on the cross. Now, I don't know what I don't know what uh, uh, form of religion you are. I'm, are I'm, are I'm you a Muslim Christian. or are you a Christian? You answer this question. Are you a Muslim or a Christian? Who's, who's the, I'm not Muslim, I'm Christian, but who's the ultimate judge? So who why, do you, call, why do you call Malvester brother then? 
Because he is my brother, even though he doesn't believe in the same faith. Every, I look at everybody as my brother and sister. May, they might not be in the same walk of life as me, but they can be saved. Jesus looks at everybody as their children, whether they are right or not. Nope. They're just nope. blinded and need to be led the Sir. right way. Sir. I don't throw Sir. people out just because Sir. they don't believe Hello. the way I do. Hello. I love Hello. Them all. Hello. Jesus loved them all. No, no, listen, here's what Jesus said. Jesus said, who is my mother and who are my brethren? He stretched forth his hand toward a disciple and said, Behold my mother and my brethren. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father, which is in heaven, the same is my brother my, and my sister and my mother. Now, I'm not going to call Malvester my brother when he's not doing the will of the Father. He, well, said, no, he, he, he says Jesus is his saved. brother and can he won't he not, even do the will of the can Father. Can he not be saved? I'm sorry? He's saved. He can be saved, but not in, not in Islam. How are you helping him to be saved? By, by giving him the truth. You're not helping him to be I, how saved. How do you know I'm not helping him? I'm giving him the truth. You're He's doing, elevated you're himself. Giving, but it's sir, not, okay, sir, what you're doing sir, is sir. chastising him. Well, are you chastising me? I'm not chastising you. I'm speaking on, to you like any other person. I believe I'm, and I'm I know sure. that well, God is love. Listen, I love I everybody, find it interesting. like I said. You know what? I find it interesting, sir. I find it interesting that you say that I shouldn't chastise someone, but then individuals like yourself call in and tell us not to chastise people, and you chastise us. You chastise us by telling us not to chastise people. People call them, don't judge people. You're wrong for doing that. Well, you're judging me. All we're doing, friends, is giving you the Bible, giving you a word from the Lord, a word that can save your souls, and yet people call in and want to make a, a big deal about the fact that we're trying to help you to see that guys like Malvester Muhammad, <clears throat> who don't even believe that Jesus is the Son of God, who don't even believe really the Bible when it gets right down to it, are false teachers and you want to call and defend them. Now, I question your Christianity if you're calling and defending uh, Malvester. Now, I'm going to give you one last word, then we've got to go. Okay. Now, you question my Christianity because I choose to love everybody and love... There, I'm not saying love them. everybody. I'm saying I'm not giving them a pass. But you, you can't keep clicking like that because I'm trying to talk. I'm trying to turn it up so, you can, so we can hear you. Okay. I'm, I just want everybody that is listening today to not think that I believe everything... Everybody says is right because I don't and God gives us the power of discernment and he tells you to read your word and learn it for yourself. That way he will and not only that but seek the power of discernment so that he can show you these things himself so that you do not need anybody to stand far before you on television and tell you how they believe or what they believe, but you will know it for yourself. Because in actuality we don't know half the people and what they're saying. We need to seek God, seek His Word, seek His knowledge, seek His wisdom, seek all that. Okay. Go to your Word, right. to your Bible, learn it for yourself, and then when you, <laughs> if you feel something is wrong, the Holy Ghost will tell you that now, it's wrong. You don't need to watch a, te a now, television now, show like that, this. Give, now Just give me the verse that. where the Holy Just Spirit's going to tell you word. these things. Go sir, to your Word. Sir, sir, give me the verse where the Holy Spirit's going to tell you these things. Uh, hold on. I'm just... Go to your word. Learn the word for yourself. You don't need people to tell okay. you what right. to believe. I got, I got to go. I'm up against the clock. Th thanks for your call. Uh, <clears throat> you know, friends, I, I just don't see why people don't realize that when you're telling individuals about false teachers, you're doing them a service. You're doing them a favor. And you're actually doing the false teacher a favor. I mean, here in Acts chapter 8, quickly, Acts chapter 8, verse 9, here was a false teacher who was bewitching the people, making himself something great. And he was actually converted. He actually obeyed the gospel. And I'm telling you, we can tell individuals who are teaching false doctrine, like Mount Vester or Brian Edwards or anybody else, we give them the truth, and then they have a choice to obey. At least they know the truth. And we're judging them, but it's righteous judgment, John 7, 24. Friends, what you need to do is you need to leave these false teachers alone. You need to leave them alone, go back to the Bible, make them give you a word from the Lord, and be, and be content, that's what they're giving you. And if not, you can always examine the church of Christ and you know that's where you'll get a word from the Lord. Remember this, always ask what does the Bible say and you'll always get a word from the Lord. Have a good night. Are you going to church only to find a club? Are you tired of looking for the Bible but only getting babble? If you want to find people who are studying God's word, come examine the church of Christ. We're meeting right here at 250 Boulevard in downtown Eden. If you want to hear more